Today is April 4th, 2023. This is the Council Subcommittee on Water Issues, and we're calling this meeting to order. Roll call, please. Chairperson Rusing? Here. Member Montoya? Here. Member Sistio? Here. All are present. You can't hear me. There you go. How's that? Perfect. Better? Okay. Perfect. Okay. okay. Item for um, A approval of the March seventh, twenty twenty three meeting minutes. Do I hear a motion? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, you guys got to slow down a little bit. Okay. <laughs> We're trying to get things done. I need most of the prayer. I guess we still have to do it electronically. Pass three zero. Do I set current? Don't do it now. Go to set current. Go ahead and do the item timer. Yeah, we're uh... okay. Item four B presentation and update regarding the residential and non residential water budget, including projects that have received approval from January one, twenty twenty three to March 27, 2023. Uh, good morning, Council. Brian Reese, uh, City of Prescott Water Resources. You're having a good morning. I'll go ahead and wait and see uh, until we get um, the item up on the screen here real quick. Or do I need to? I have an issue. Okay. No. Sorry. Sure is a pretty screensaver. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully it's worth the wait. <laughs> <laughs> you can still do your presentation. Okay. okay. Sure, no problem. Okay. So uh, we're just starting off here with the um, um, update on the water budget for residential and non-residential. Uh, so per water policy, 2022 water po policy 1113, um, we've set uh, residential and non-residential budgets for um, January 1st through June 30th of 2023. Uh, for 25 acre feet, uh, res respectively, for non-residential and for residential. Um, so today, um, oh, here we go. Okay, so we'll be uh, giving an update on the on the uh, the water usage so far between uh, January 1st and effective all the way through March 27th. So. So uh, between. Um, um, between January 1st and March 27th, we've had four residential uh, projects. Okay, here we go. And I want to see if this advances page-wise or... You have to click the down arrow, I think. Okay. Oh, thank you, Kay. Okay, down arrow? Okay. Yes, it it's on. working now. Thank you, sir. Okay, so um, uh, between uh, January 1st and uh, March 27th, I've had four residential projects um, approved to date. Um, uh, out of those four residential projects, um, totaling 11.76 acre feet. 
Um, we've had two projects that were administratively approved um, and two projects that have gone through the WIS committee. So I'm going to advance. over to here. So here's our residential table. Um, so since uh, the last presentation on the water budget, you'll see that we have the Prescott Commons, um, uh, aka um, Old City Hall, um, portion of the multifamily that was approved, 6.2 acre feet. Um, we also had the Sunset Apartment that went through WIS committee um, uh, on our last go around. And then we had this um, eight unit complex um, that came in under one acre foot and as um, under eight or under uh, units, it, it was administratively approved. So that gave us um, at this point a total of 11.76 acre feet um, out of the total 25 acre foot budget, giving us a remaining 13.24 acre feet in non-residential or in residential projects at this point. Um, and then Moving over to the non-residential projects. Um, so to date, we have a total of nine projects that were um, approved uh, through the non-residential track. Um, uh, one of them exceeded the um, threshold for, um, for administrative approval and went to WIS. Um, but uh, adding or combining all together, um, our nine projects total 12.45 acre feet out of the 25 acre foot budget uh, with a remaining budget for the rest of the year of about 12.55 acre feet. So uh, being basically halfway through um, the budget, the six month half budget year. Uh, yes. I, just to clarify, Brian, yeah. uh, when you said through the rest of the year, you mean the rest of the budget period? Exactly. Okay. Rest of the budget period, the half year budget period up to uh, June 30th. Um, we're approximately halfway through with, uh, with the water allotment that was set for the, the budget time. So it seems to be balancing out fairly well. Um, and then uh, the, last, um, the last item here is, is, which was the first item, let me go back up. It's what we uh, refer to as the projects uh, under existing contracts. So um, at this point, uh, between our, up to March 27th, uh, there's a total of 16 projects uh, approved uh, uh, under existing contracts. Um, uh, most of these uh, fall in the, in the realm of, um, of uh, groundwater subdivisions. Uh, there was one um, subdivision plat and there was uh, one uh, multifamily complex here uh, um, shown at the bottom there who had the two, the two units. So uh, total combined um, for the 16 projects is uh, resi uh, 474 residential units uh, comprising 66.62 acre feet. And that is our existing contract um, uh, values up to this point. That, that water does not come out of uh, either the residential or the non-residential budget for January 1st through June 30th. So that's just a quick summary of where we're at at this point in time. If you have any questions, I'd be glad to try to answer for you. Okay. Mr. Shushka, do you have any comments? No, ma'am. Thank you. Mr. Montoya? Yeah, uh, thank you, Chair. I do have a couple of comments. Um, Brian... I, I've made this request before, I think. Um, it seems like this budget information is useful, for, for me, certainly. Uh, but it would be more useful if I understood in the greater context of the uncommitted demand we have related to the overall water policy. And when I looked at it, when I was preparing for this meeting, it looks like as recently as when we adopted the new water policy, we were sitting on about 1978 0.44 acre feet available for water, bu water budgeting. And I'd just like to know where we stand so there's a running tally of that, you know, because I think there's a perception that we're using this as a bank account, but I don't know about you, but if I don't know what my total balance is, I don't really feel comfortable spending money. Okay. So ju just some insight. And again, this is respectfully my second or third request about this. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. Okay, um, we will try to see about incorporating that non-committed 
uh, demand and, and try to reflect it into and, the And, and I understand it, budget, it's a little bit nebulous because the worm is not a yes. precise tool, and I get all that, but, but uh, just some rough estimate of provisional uncommitted demand would be nice to know, just in the context of these numbers. So, um, and what we're planning to do is, um, at, at our next WIS meeting, is, is have an update on the worm. At that point, we should have some good numbers on what's going on with the, uh, with the burn, uh, worm based on all of the data from last year, plus give, um, give a recap or of kind of what the worm does, how it works, and maybe we can kind of link that into the non-committed uh, non demand that we have available and see if we can kind of uh, marry those two things up. So we'll work on that for you. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. And, and I'd like to make a few comments. Thank you, Brian. Uh -huh. I, I think the public needs to realize that the water budget only budgets for new entitlements. And we have, uh, for the first quarter, we had 66.62 acre feet allocated that were already existing entitlements. So if you add the two together, we've allocated 78.38 actually uh, acre feet for the first uh, three months. So I think that's, that's an important distinction that the public uh, needs to uh, understand. And then I was going to ask, uh, we didn't do any commercial in the first, um, I don't see anything here for commercial. Did I miss the commercial or non-residential? Well, um, so we, um, on the non-residential side, we had the, um, all of them were, um, well, Prescott Commons uh, okay. from last WIS okay. um, was incorporated in. And, um, and then we had uh, four administrative approved okay items on there so we approved I see here um, 12.45 yes for the, for the commercial yes exactly that's a running total all the way from January 1st which as the public knows uh, the commercial uses a lot a lot less than the uh, residential yes uh, kind of um, I Usually. guess uh, yeah unit per unit anyway yeah. okay <laughs> all righty okay do we have any comments from the public no, we do not. Okay. All righty. Thank you. Let's move on to the next item. Okay, we have item 4C, water service application number WSA 23-005 for Valley Street Apartments, an 18-unit apartment building located on one-acre parcel on Valley Street. Location APN 111-11-131-836 Valley Street. Applicant Stro Architect on behalf of owner Kramer Family Living Trust. Okay, well thank you. Yes, so we have the um, we have our Valley Apartments here and just to let you know um, uh, we have the architect in the uh, in the audience today, so if there's any any questions that he might be able to answer, he's available for us. Um, so we have our Valley Apartment uh, complex here shown in red on outline on the screen um, off of Valley and uh, just north of Fair Street. Um, for context, um, we had the Sunset Apartments that were approved through WIS um, last month um, is adjacent to it uh, just to the west and it comprises the five parcels um, just adjacent to this right here. So um, rather uh, these projects uh, abut up against each other. Um, this project consists of 18 unit uh, uh, apartment complex units, um, uh, approximately a one acre site. Um, and um, Kelly Wise Engineering did a, a demand analysis for this project. Um, they utilized the worm multiplier for, um, for apartments of uh, 0 0.12 um, based on the 18 um, apartment units. That uh, demand comes up to 2.16 acre feet per year. Um, the site uh, is incorporating 0 0.9 acre feet um, and using a Arizona Department of Water Resources multiplier, 1.5 um, acre feet per year per um, uh, uh, per per acre, uh, gives us a, um, a usage of a 0.14 acre feet anticipated for landscape. So total usage of 2.3 acre feet per year. Um, there's an existing 
Um, there's an existing uh, building on the property, and based on um, based on uh, utility usage, uh, comes out to uh, uh, average of 0 0.64 acre feet per year. So subtracting that, we get a net usage of 1.66 acre feet per year for this property. Um, I have a site plan here, which we can take a quick look at. Maybe. Ah, there we go. Okay, so here's the site plan showing the um, the units uh, situated in two buildings, um, parking lot. Um, they're also showing on the site plan some retention detention areas um, within the uh, the fronting landscape off the street. Um, usage for probably um, uh, controlling uh, water quality and also uh, potentially um, uh, reduce um, um, any uh, increase in runoff from the property due to the impervious, uh, new impervious area would be um, my assumption at this point. But um, so it looks like, uh, but they are uh, accounting for some, some uh, water quality features on their site. So, um, See, uh, if uh, this project was uh, is approved to go forward, um, it leave about approximately 11.6 acre feet left in the budget till June 30th. Um, so all in all, I think that uh, summarizes what we got going on with this water service application. If there's any questions, I'd be glad to try to answer. Mr. Shishka, any comments? No, ma'am. Mr. Montoya. I'm good. Um, I, I have a question. I just want to make sure that th this unit, this uh, project is going to be sub-metered that, so that each tenant will be aware of their water use. So sub-metered or is it per building? Good morning. Good morning. Gwen Roach, Deputy Public Works. Um, so the way that the code is written, uh, Madam Chairman, if the, it depends on the way the building is plumbed. So if it is plumbed as one unit, then there would be one, uh, one connection for each building. However, if it's plumbed differently, then it potentially could have submeters, and we look at that at the time that plants are submitted for the project. The way these buildings are configured, I would find it highly unlikely that it would not be centrally plumbed. So it's unlikely that there will be individual water meters on these buildings or sub meters on these buildings. So they'll be like just two meters, one meter? One for, for each building, yes. Okay. But again, when the plans come in, we always encourage that mm -hmm. to the degree that we can. Um, the sub metering is more easily applied in applications where we have horizontal rentals, in other words, mm -hmm. when they're individual units as opposed to a common plumbing system in one building. Okay. And that is the way that the code was written. Mm -hmm was to address that based on how the building is constructed. Okay, all righty, thank you for the clarification and the details. Another comment I'd like to make is uh, I, I uh, like the uh, concept of the detention basins, which could also function as uh, rain gardens to collect uh, stormwater uh, runoff to uh, keep it out of the, the pollution out of the creek and to help uh, filter the water back into uh, into the soil. So do we have any uh, public comments? Um, okay, Peter. I did not, I did not put this item no. on my request to speak. Mm -hmm. In the past, this committee was a little less formal in which we mm -hmm. discussed things yeah. rather than have to go through the clerk for everything. But anyway, I'd like to point out that there is groundwater contamination in this area. Current remedial efforts are underway in the fries by the gas station over there. And I just a slight worry if everybody with these uh, retention basins and water infiltration has mm -hmm. considered that, that we don't mm -hmm. change the flow of groundwater in the area to move this contamination around. Yeah, thank you. I, I uh, believe there was an old... Um uh, dry cleaners across from Fry's, and they've had some TCEs. Uh, right, a and a, it's a state wharf water quality yeah. assurance mm -hmm. fund remediation that is ongoing. Yeah, okay, thank you. And Mr. Stroh, 
Um, do you have any comments on your wonderful project? No, I think it's, it, it fits all the criteria. Mm -hmm. It's a nice infill project. Mm -hmm. It's uh, walkable to restaurants, the hospital, you name it. So I, and um, like the gentleman said, it's um, had water service for probably 40 or 50 years, I would imagine. Mm -hmm. So um, I think it's um, a nice quality project. And I sent the, uh, do you have the renderings too? Uh, I didn't have the renderings for my packet, no. Oh, I sent those to Tammy, but anyway, it's it's a nice looking project also. Um, and there are native cottonwood trees on the site. Nice. Mm -hmm. um, Most of those will be taken down because they drink too much water. Um, I have a question. Um, as far as future residents, do you think this might um, alleviate some of our workforce housing um, shortage, this infill project? I think his apartments are typically uh, market rate. Mm-hmm you know, without any uh, incentives. Mm -hmm. uh, he's going to go with market rate, I'm pretty sure. Okay. So. All right. Mr. Montoya. Uh, just one point that I, when we talk about workforce housing, in my mind, one of the things that's helpful is anytime we're increasing inventory, mm -hmm. uh, supply and demand are intricately, like intimately linked. And so uh, in my mind, anytime we're increasing the supply, uh, More we're, competition. We're, yeah, we're driving down the demand. So even though it, market rate is reasonable, it's a capitalist society that we live in, mm -hmm. and he's, you know, but he'll have to compete against the other project that we approved in the neighborhood. Right so. next door. <laughs> You're 100 percent correct, Brandon. Um, Virgil owns that smaller project just to the north of this one, and demand is fluttering down a little bit. So his prices are coming down a little bit. So I'm sure that's mm -hmm. happening citywide. Okay. All righty. Thank you. Any any public comment? Okay. No more public comment. All righty. Do I um, hear a motion? Uh, let me see here. here. Uh, I move to recommend forwarding WSA 23-005 to council for approval. Second. Please vote. Pass three zero. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Thanks, you know that is a good point. Increase the supply. Brings down more competition. Item four D, presentation from staff regarding monthly PFAS update. Good morning, Steve Olfers, Utilities Manager. I'm happy to announce today that uh, we've gotten our EPA proposed MCLs, uh, maximum contaminant levels, for our PFAS species. Uh, they came in and as what we would consider better than what we'd hoped for. Uh, both of the PFOA and PFOFOS, I'm trying not to say all the different words that go along with that, are at four parts per trillion. Um, and there's some other caveats there that we still have to try to figure out how they're going to affect our water system. Not big ones, just a matter of working through the details. So, oh, here, I gotta forget this, can't forget this. So as you're all aware, uh, we uh, first announced that we had uh, a PFO PFOS contamination in our wells back in May of 2022 20 after the ADEQ did sampling at the airport wells. Uh, up on that, we started sampling all of our wells and started gathering data to determine where we are within the, the framework of how EPA is working. So at this point, uh, the, with the announcement of the proposed MCLs, we are evaluating how our wells fit into that framework. And basically we are where we were before. All of our wells are under the proposed MCL accepting airport well number five. And so- Excuse me, Mr. Montoya. Sorry, yes. Yeah, yeah Steve, uh, that was my question about, you're, you're getting to, maybe you're getting into it right now, but uh, so sorry to cut you off, but- That's okay. My question is with airport well number five, do we have, I know at one point council had kind of considered the idea of bringing in an outside consultant to look at remediation. Um, 
I think the prevailing thought at the time was let's wait to see where the MCLs land before we kind of jump the gun with that. Uh, now that we know, do we have, um, I guess I have mo a couple questions. First one is, it would seem to me that we need airport, airport well number five in our you know, supply to provide to our consumers. Um, assuming that's true, do we have a short-term intermediate or long-term plan at this point for bringing it back into our, our portfolio, so to speak? At this point, yes, yesterday we spoke with our, our consultant that uh, Waterworks, and we have tasked them with coming up with different ideas of how we can get well number five back into our portfolio. We have additional wells that we want to also drill out there, and so we're trying to figure out where those good, where good places would be. And so our task with them was to start looking at the different types of media that might be used for removing the PFAS from the, from the water system. And so we're going to send water samples to them, and they'll get to the manufacturers to figure out which one might be best for us in a treatment process. And so are they, you said we're looking at other well sites. Are we going to sample before we, you know, obviously I would imagine we'd sample as we, as we kind of do those test drilling for the well sites. Are we going to kind of see, well, this is way too high or would consider too much remediation to have this be a useful site? Is that kind of what we're considering with public uh, waterworks? Yes, sir. Um, what, we're, what we're working on also is well siting. And essentially what you do is you would, we have a report that shows us where our best recovery might be at the, at the, around the airport. And so we're going to start looking around and doing some testing holes. And so you, you drill a small hole, go down there, you know, send sampling equipment down and, and uh, try to figure out what kind of contaminants are, are within that water area. Uh, we also have another contaminant of concern, which is arsenic. Sure. And so we're going to have to play both of those against each other to make sure that we stay in compliance. Of course, at the airport, we have very limited ability in which to blend because each well is its own EPDS or entry point to the distribution system. And so we will have to treat each one of those wells independently from themselves is or there, from others. It, and last question, because sure. I'm seeing Steve might have a question too. Is there um, consideration towards bringing in a blending system there uh, and in terms of what the consultant is looking at, or is that deemed not worthy of consideration at this point? I, I believe, well, in our discussion yesterday, we had a myriad of ideas. No, no ideas are off the table at this point. So there certainly is a concept that would allow us to blend in that general area. Uh, the, the challenge is it's more infrastructure, uh, a tank, and other types of equipment that are right near the airport. And so we're going to have to take those challenges on as well. Got it. So we we have we have some challenges out there to try to get to try to figure out how we can work this in with with a new PFOS system. Okay, um, thank you. Um, I, I would just like to make a statement. You know, our airport well, uh, which was our newest well and pumping the most, unfortunately, is downstream from the airport and also from our wastewater uh, treatment plant where we uh, recharge. So I would hope that when we're searching for new sites that we look upstream from the airport, from where the groundwater flows underground and upstream from our wastewater treatment plant. Is that, uh, does that make sense? Absolutely, yes ma'am. Okay. And that is something that we are also looking at as when we're siting lo locations for our new wells. Okay. And then um, also, have we started looking at uh, exploring funding sources for these mitigations? Well, right now, because everything's proposed and mm -hmm. WIFA still has not put their program together for the for the uh, the funding mechanism, we're still kind of up in the air for that. But yes, we already have a pre-application in to WIFA for these types of uh, treatment systems. And uh, so we'll be looking at any different way that we could possibly fund these different projects. Okay. Alrighty, thank you, Mr. Uh, Shishka. Thank you, Chair. You know, Steve, I'm assuming that, you know, before this situation with PFOA and PFOS, that 
the wells out in at the airport were taking some pressure off of the Chino Valley wells. Could you give us a number, uh, percentage-wise, how much they took off, how much pressure they took off of those Chino Valley wells? Wow, you're asked. That's a tough question, Mr. Shushka. <laughs> um, I'd have to refer back to to the folks who were here at the time, but right now, the way that we operate the system is that Chino Valley is responsible for a great majority okay. of our water, and the airport is more of a support system for. Uh, for the area around the airport and the new zones up in the Granite Dells estates, those types of places. Uh -huh. Once the, I, uh, the intermediate pump station is done, then we will be able to incorporate the water from the airport into the water with Chino and mix them there at that site and be able to move water both directions. So we'll be able to take it out of the airport and put it into Chino, or we'll be able to take water from Chino and put it into the airport area. So that gives us a lot of flexibility there. Okay, so the bottom line is, you know, depending on, on how much we're using the airport wells, it is going to take some pressure off of the Chino Valley wells. Yes, sir. Okay. Well, and I believe, and I'm stepping into an area where I'm not an expert in, that there is legal ramifications to where we have to take water from. And I, I don't know if... That needs further explanation, but uh, we do have uh, legal rights or the way that we have to take water from different wells. Sure. Okay. Thank you very thank much. You. Mm -hmm. Mr. Montoya. Uh, Steve, I just want to follow up on uh, the intermediate pump station. Yes, sir. Uh, when that comes online, is there a notion of looking at doing blending there as well? If we're going to incorporate both supplies, uh, it, you know, if, if, it's, if that's kind of like a, a hub that the water's coming into, is that considered at all, or is that not how it would work? The, the blending would have to occur in the airport area because of the, the distribution system. We would have to build an independent system that would connect all of the wells at the airport and then transport it, it out to the IPS. So it, it, it's a complicated process. We're, we're, we're not ruling out any of the ideas that are coming up uh, because everything is viable at this point. We just need to make some financial decisions and, and operationally we'll adapt. Makes sense. Thanks, Steve. Yes, sir. Okay. Any other comments? Well, I just wanted to thank Steve and our water resource. Um, okay. Peter. Thank you, Councilwoman. Uh, I just wanted to know if we've come to any conclusion whether the recharge basin is a source for this PFAS out there? Uh, yes, Steve. Uh, we have not done, we, we have some geological work being uh, that has been done, but I can't make a statement either way. Uh, right. I don't have any proof either way okay, that it's we, influencing. Have, have we collected samples to try to understand that? At this point, our sampling has been focused on the public drinking water system. Um, we have done some samples uh, in the wastewater, which we released earlier in, the, uh, in 2022. We're currently sampling our biosolids as well, just to get us an idea of, uh, of, of what we're dealing with. But at this point, we've been focusing all our efforts on the wellhead contamination. Right, but I just hate to see us continue to, to spread PFAS as we recharge more and more water as, as well. So it's a, it's a bigger picture. I Thank completely you. understand. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I was just going to say I want to thank Steve and our Water Resources Department for um, all their hard work in um, mitigating this and keeping our water um, keeping our water safe. Um, it's going to be a, a journey, and uh, but I think we've got a, a pretty good head start on it. So thank you very much. Thank you. May I make one more comment? Yes. The public comment period is open until May 30th. Okay. Uh, the PFAS page uh, on EPA, epa.gov backslash PFAS, uh, will could give you a direct uh, route to that. The EPA will, will uh, examine all the comments. And so it's public and it's for organizations. So feel free to, to go out there and find that and put your comment in in for the uh, proposed rules okay all righty sorry one, one more question steve sure uh 
I, I gleaned that Public Works feels okay with these MCL standards. Is that an accurate way to describe it? That you guys feel like these are standards that we can live with for where we're at? Yes, sir. I believe we feel very fortunate that they landed where they are. Okay. Thanks. All righty. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, item 4E, presentation and discussion regarding reports for Arizona Department of Water Resources 2022 annual filing. Good morning, Madam Chair, Council Member Shishka. Good morning. Mayor Pro Tem Montoya. Kay Sitta, Water Resources Project Manager with the City. Um, each year, the city is required to file an annual report with the Arizona Department of Water Resources, uh, if you're in an active management area, as we are in the Prescott AMA. So we need to report how much groundwater has been pumped from our non-exempt wells. And this information enables the state to find out where we withdraw our water and how we're using it, where it's being sent. So this past year, uh, the city pumped 7,020 acre feet. Let's see if we can move this down a little bit. Yes. Um, <clears throat> which is less than our high in 2020 of 7,548 acre feet. And it was also less than um, 2021, which was 7,305. And you'll see that a little bit better when we move to the graph on the next page. Uh, our lost and unaccounted for water, this is an estimate because I only just submitted the annual report last week by the deadline. But it looks like it's going to be about 5.64%, which is consistent with how it was last year. It was also in the 5% range. So the fees that we um, send off to, uh, to the department this year, the fee was $3,346.69. And that fee has been paid uh, by the March 31st deadline. So again, I'm showing here how much groundwater we pumped in 2022, 7,020 acre feet. And we also have municipal supply. And in this, um, the, um, let's see, where am I? Oh, yeah. So we provided water to homes and businesses. Um, we did put in a, a revised report, but it unfortunately, it looks like the original one came up instead. So I'll just read to you what we have on here. So. Um, the largest category of use was both single family and multifamily, and that was 4,254 acre feet. The second largest use is commercial, which was 1,187 acre feet, followed by government at 398 acre feet. And then we combined the rest because now we're getting down into pretty small numbers. So turf, construction, metered and unmetered and industrial account for the remaining 593 acre feet. Kay, could you expound on what you mean by government? Um, yeah, we, we do have a government use and I did write that down. Oh. Oh, the government use. This is what what the city uses. It's so the it's just the city. Use. It's not like yeah. the VA or um, the county um, administration building. It's just the city. You know, I'm not positive about that. Oh, to be okay. honest, I'd have to double check that. Alrighty. See what government entail. Enta okay. Um, it, what it all encompasses. So I might be incorrect on that. Okay. Well, we'll check into that. Okay, I can do that. Um, so then. Total water recharged, let me move this down a little bit. Oh, there it is, okay. Um, <clears throat> there are actually three types of water that we recharged uh, according to our permit. So we have surface water from Watson and Willow Lakes.
and that was 3,846 acre feet. Then we have reclaimed water um, from customers that would have been connected to our wastewater system and our treatment facility that goes into our treatment facilities. And then, oh, that was 3,141 acre feet. And then Prop 400 water, which this year was 70.9 acre feet. And then lastly, we can bring this down a little bit. speak here. Um, so we do have um, renewable supplies that we can use to offset our groundwater production, and this can be used for future growth. So that amount that we recovered this year in 2022 was 5,347 acre feet. And so now I'll go to the... Oh yes, that's how much we pumped. How much we pumped this year in 2022. Oh, oh, mm -hmm. Oh. Mm -hmm. Okay, so on to our graph. Um, so you can see. Well, I can't see. I'm going to have to put my <laughs> distance glasses on. <laughs> This is about 13 years of data here, and you can see now where we've got the groundwater pumping. You can see how we had a high in 2020 of, of oh, what did I say that was? Now I have to change glasses again. <laughs> <laughs> 7548 acre feet, and then in 2021, 7305, and now this year, 7020. Um, I'd like to just ask you a question about the 2020 year the, on the bar graph, how it was a pretty big jump. I was just looking at it thinking, I wonder if that's from COVID where everyone was at home, nobody could travel, right? and just working in their yards more. And I, I think uh, that's probably a really good explanation, yeah. but it was also a um, pretty dry year all, yeah. that year too. And a pretty dry year, so it was a combination of two I things, because that's think a pretty... So unusual spike there. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. it was. Okay, thank you. And then scroll down a little bit more. Let's see, I hate to wish I could get it quite, well, can't get it quite right. But anyway, this is our gallons per capita per day. And um, we have, again, 13, oh, nine, tw um, 12 years of data here. So you can see, oh, Thank you, whoever did that, appreciate it. Um, you can see that our GPCD in 2021 went down to 104. Now we won't know what our GPCD will be for our 2022 annual report until sometime in the fall that we'll get a, another letter. But I'm hoping for another low number such as this one. So we've got a really nice downward trend here with the uh, gallons per capita per day usage and I think we can assume that a lot of that is based on water conservation. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Okay. Does anyone have any questions for me on these two graphs or on the previous slide? No. Okay, and I'm gonna go on to the next. Do you have any uh, questions? Yes, it is, and somebody told me it's lower than Prescott Valley, so. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if we can keep going. Can um, somebody put up the next slides for me, please, about Water Awareness Month? Are those gonna show up? Someone working busily behind. <laughs> okay, there we go. Great, thank you. 
Okay, so um, in April of each year, the city of Prescott has been a water conservation partner in Arizona Water Awareness Month with ADWR. Uh, water Awareness Month is an annual outreach campaign that spreads the word about the value of conserving the Southwest's most precious resource, water. With over two, week, two decades of chronic drought stressing the Southwest's water resources, it's never been more important to take a good hard look at our water use habits and commitment to use our water supply smartly. Practicing a low water use lifestyle is a way each individual and business in Arizona can help ensure a long-term sufficient water supply. So there are a bunch of activities that are coming up in, month, in this, this month. And the first one was that um, the library viewery display was um, put up over sa on Saturday. So please go, feel free to go by and check that out. It's a timeline from 1864 when the earliest Prescottonians uh, were using private wells until 2023. We also have a new water conservation website. And this was part of a $10,000 matching grant from ADWR, which we secured in January of 2022. And it allows for a water conservation website devoted entirely to water savings information. And it also links to our rebate incentive program. It includes a calendar of events. Excuse me, Kate. Yes. Did you move on to item 4F? Is that where you're at? Yes. Yes. Okay. Oh. She just kind of segued that. into it. Yeah, I needed to oh. announce that. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Here, here's our water conservation website. Okay. Um, so it has tips on how to save water indoors, outdoors, outdoor landscaping. Um, there's a monthly blog. There's a calendar of events. And um, you can find this website at prescottwater.com. And it looks like I skipped ahead. So here's our, the slide about the, uh, the Water Awareness Month and the um, viewery, at the, the timeline at the viewery. And then on April 22nd, the city of Prescott, we are pleased to sponsor once again Earth Day on Cortez Street. It's adjacent to the Courthouse Square. There's also a pedestrian, bicycle, and traffic advisory committee, that you'll, which will have a table right next to ours. And I also understand from Tammy that we will now be sharing a table with the general plan committee, and they'll, have, they'll be there too. Um, Earth Day reminds us to think globally and act locally, and the event is from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. There's also the Grow Native Plant Sale. This is a Highland Center for Natural History event. It takes place uh, the first weekend in May, but online ordering begins on April 19th, and so that's why I've included here in this slide. And then people can come by and pick up their plants on May 5th and 6th from 8 to 2. And the city of Prescott, each year we also make um, goodie bags somewhere between 100 and 200 of them, depending on how many the Highland Center requests, where we put a lot of different um, uh, materials into goodie bags and have those for the, uh, to hand out to the customers as they come and pick up their plants. And lastly, the Yavapai County Home and Garden Show. It's going to be May 19th through 21st of this year. This is a photo from last year. And the woman up there at the top, that's who won our um, rain barrel last year. And then we've also got the advertisement that you're seeing there in the lower right-hand corner. That's the ad that's going to appear in this, um, this year's um, uh, Building Yavapai magazine. So, and I think that's it. Does anyone have any questions for me on these events that we have going on this next this month and next? Are you going to be handing out the free rain gauges? 
Yes, we will. <laughs> okay, because I... Uh, those, are, those are always a hugely popular yes. item at the, at the Home and Garden Show. I have one at home, and I watch it like a hawk. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. Keep track. <laughs> Mr. Montoya? Chair, yeah, I heard uh, recently from uh, Supervisor Brown that the county has superior rain gauges to ours. Have you heard any tell of that? I have not. He says that his, the rain gauges that the county has will capture snow as well as rain. Oh. oh. Just thrown out there. Oh, my gosh. He was bragging. Yeah, I guess so. Well, maybe I should stop by and see what theirs looks like. Check out the competition. Yeah, I'm just Definitely. <laughs> In a year like this where we've had a lot of snow, you know, right. people want to know. Okay. Okay, any okay. public comments? No public comments. Oh. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Kay. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're moving on to item 4F, uh, excuse me, item 5, general announcements from staff. Hello again, Council. Brian Reese, uh, Water Resources, City of Prescott. And we do not have any general announcements for this meeting at this time. Okay, good, thank you. All righty, well, I guess that wraps it up. This meeting is adjourned. <laughs>